All right, I have a deal right. I'd like to talk to you guys about. Um, awesome. It, it looks like it's a wholesale deal and it's in uh, Pennsylvania and it's owned by an older lady and uh, they're uh, clo getting close to pre foreclosure. She's had the property, it actually is a property with two houses on it. So there's a first front house, which is a 4 1, I'm sorry, 4 2, needs a, some work. And then there's a house in the back, which is a um, two bedroom, one bath, needs work too. So the situation is the front house is vacant and the back house has her nephew in it with a pit bull. He's in it now. So he doesn't want to go anywhere. So the numbers on it, when I did all the comps, have it ranging in the 135 to 145 range, ARV. And then with the walkthrough and everything that they told me, it looks like I did the uh, Mayo formula, right? That's what I would do, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it looks like about 50,000 in repairs. So my offer comes in around 50,000 for this property. So that's um, what I'm gonna offer. And they said that they were at actually. Yes, so my challenge is number one, how can I start marketing this right away when he's in the back? I can have them come to the front house, but they gave him a notice. They don't know what he's going to do and when he's going to get out. That's first of all. So that ties me up. That's a concern. Mm -hmm. Second of all, um, they now told me that if they do it, the front house has a lot of stuff in it and they're not willing to get a dumpster and get it out of there because they're elderly and they really can't do it. So that would be up to me to get it out of there. So how am I going to do that? And then, you know, show it. So I'm just kind of confused about the logistics of it. I haven't done a wholesale deal out of state yet. So it's a little tricky. I'm not investing anything other than the $10. They're good to what go. Was, I can send over the agreement. What was their asking price originally? 50, 50,000. Okay. All right. So you're going to sign it up at 50. Yep. You're just going to tell your buyers that you send over there. The thing's being sold as is, and by the way, there's somebody living in the back house, so you probably don't want to go in there. And uh, the lockbox code for the front house is this. When, when you have to do an eviction on a rehabable property, you've got to factor in, in addition to the cost of the rehab, the cost of the eviction. So, you know, you got to put a couple thousand to five thousand in for an eviction. Um, right, but you're, yeah. Sophia, you're not going to do any of that. You're not cleaning out the house with the junk and everything. you're not getting the, your buyer's doing all that. They're taking it as is. Oh, okay. 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 So, um, who should I send over there to get, I mean, the pictures they sent me are good pictures. They're not really what it looks like now. So if I market it like that, is that going to be an issue? I just explain to the person. Apparently, it's got a lot of things over there uh, that you got to clean out, Mr. Buyer. The, and am yeah. I, I'm going toward investors, right? Because mm -hmm. no one's going to get a loan on this, not end user, right? Right. Yep. Cash right. buyers, rehabbers. What Cash I'm buyer, rehabbers. About, what I'm concerned about is your price too high. 50 is too much. Go, give me the numbers again. 135 is ARV. Yeah, um, that's it ranges of, between 135 to 143. So I did it at 143 times 70 percent is no, 160. That's that's probably part of the problem. Oh, our math that I learned for for Mayo was always at 70 percent. We changed that a couple three months ago. We've been talking oh. about it on the calls. You need to be at 60 percent less the cost of rehab, mm -hmm. less the cost of the eviction. My my back of the envelope number. You said 50 of rehab. Uh, between, uh, it's really 46,000 was the oh, estimate. 50. Let's say 50. That's what I said. Yeah. You're, you're overpriced by at least $20,000. Okay. You, you need to be more like 20 to 30 purchase price. Now the eviction, they already told him 30 days. He's apparently the family did. And he said, okay with that. You're, you're too high on it. None of that's relevant. You won't be able to, I don't think you'll be able to sell it in this economy. To a rehabber, if you pay 50, you're not going to get 60 out of a rehabber. It's not going to happen. Mm. Take 135 times 0. 0.6, that's 81 minus 50, and then minus 5 for eviction. Your maximum, maximum allowable offer is 26. Well, we don't need the 5 in there. Not that ma that matters much, but. Well, you try and get out a young guy with a pit bull who's not making payments and see how much that costs you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Hmm. Uh, you can pay more you're just gonna be you're not gonna get it sold hmm 
All right. Now, even though it's two houses on one lot. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. Is it is it legal for two houses? Until I do a title and lead search. Well, I don't, how, what, how will I know that? If, if they're saying it's okay and I mean, county well, docs is all I got to go on, right? Unless uh, you want to pay for a survey. Am I correct? No. No, no, you go to the assessor's office, the county assessor's office. This is in another state. Doesn't matter. They're okay. almost all of them are online or you call them and say, uh, I want to confirm that 123 Main Street is permitted for two houses. Okay. And you go through the square footage and bedrooms and bathrooms and they'll say yes or no. Okay. It also has a garage on the property too. Same, same deal. That's why it's hard to tell if what Zillow and all those sites say it's worth if they have it just as one house or the garage and the second house. That's another thing that I, you can't tell in the price that the comps are coming out at. 90% of the time, the sellers will tell you everything is copacetic, but they will be lying. They, <laughs> they will have done bootleg additions, that extra houses, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and what's gonna happen going forward is lenders are gonna get more you know, when they give out loans, they're going to get even tighter. Their belt's going to tighten even more, and they're going to make sure all the boxes are checked. So you're you're not going to get a buyer at the end of the day. You've got to look upstream. If you were to buy it as a wholesale and then sell it to a rehabber who's going to rehab it, they're going to look at can I even sell it like this? And you know, it's it's going to have to meet all of the criteria. Okay, what's so what's call state? the assessor's office? Say that again, Jeff. State? What state? Uh, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Blairsville, Pennsylvania. Oh, there you go. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I've never been there. You want the deal? Yeah. Uh, give me five grand. I'll give it to you. I've never been there. Yeah. See, that's a good sign. It's got your name in it. It must be uh -huh. success. Uh-huh. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm trying. I'm just, you know, trying to get something going uh, with the wholesale thing here. Since it would well, be my it, first one. It sounds like they're a prospect. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that because their asking price, the spread between their asking and the ARV is already pretty big. That's just not big enough. So mm -hmm. it's somebody to negotiate with for sure. I wouldn't just throw them out yet. <laughs>